Lots of times in electronic music, I hear a particular effect where a sound plays for a length of time, say four bars, eight bars, 16 bars, something like that. And the sound goes up in pitch and helps to build a sort of tension. This upward moving sound effect is what we will be focusing on in this tutorial. Also, just note that for this tutorial, I'm using a house or techno, whatever, 4-4 style pattern. But this technique could be applied to any style of music you like. Alright, so let's get started. I'm actually going to flip over to the arrangement view by hitting the tab key. And I'm just going to take a look at what I have. If I look up top, I have this drum track, which is actually a group track. And if I unfold it, I see I have some basic elements like kick, clap, hats, percussion, that sort of thing. So I'm just actually going to play it back and listen to what we have. Notice I have the loop uh, turned on, so it'll just keep looping back and forth. So let me hit play. Alright, so at this point we don't have anything too fancy. Uh, it's just your standard four on the floor style pattern. But it serves as a nice basis uh, for our build. So I'm just going to stretch out or extend these patterns. And if I just highlight all of them and just drag one out, you can extend all the patterns. And I'm going to give us about 16 bars. And I'm just going to fold up the drum group track. And now I'm just going to go into my live devices and just drag the default simpler into the drop area. Then I'm going to jump back up to my file browser and drag in this analog pulse waveform. Now there should be a link along with this video tutorial to where you could download these files if you'd like to follow along. So the next thing I'm going to do is turn loop on so that this waveform keeps looping back and forth and we can have a nice sustained sound. So now I'm going to create a blank MIDI clip. So I'm just going to select eight bars on the timeline and then hit Apple Shift M. Uh, it should be Control Shift M on Windows and I have a blank MIDI clip. And again, we're going to make a sound that keeps rising in pitch. And there, there's a bunch of different ways to do this. We could use the pitch envelope on a synth, but that's only going to get us a certain level of precision. If we want the sound to end on an exact note, I've found that this technique works the best. And again, you could use the pitch envelope. I have nothing against that, but again, this technique that I'm going to show you, I think, is the most accurate if you want it to get to a certain pitch exactly when you want the drop to come. And now I'm going back into my MIDI clip, and I'm going to start drawing in some notes. And I'm assuming my song is in the key of C. So what's going to happen is I'm going to start with my sound. It'll be on a C, and it'll ascend, ascend, ascend. And by the time it gets to the end, it'll be on a C, and then the drop will come in. Alright, so I'm just duplicating that note, and I'm putting it on a D, and then an E, and an F. And notice that each note here is one bar long, and this works out nicely, because we'll be starting on a C, the pitch will be rising, we'll be building tension, and then finally when we get back to that C, the drop will come in. So let's go play this back and hear what we have. Alright, so at this point we have something that definitely rises, or the pitch rises, but it sounds to me like we have a bunch of different notes, and we want just something continuous, like a continuous sound. So what I'm going to do now is, I'm just going to select all notes, and I'm just going to drag them out. Now I'm turning glide on, and setting voices to one. This coupled with the overlapping notes we have set in the MIDI editor, will give us a phrase that will glide from one note to the next. The trick is that if we set our glide time to something relatively long, say about two seconds, we can smoothly transition from one note to the next and have it sound as if all eight notes are just one long note that is steadily rising in pitch. 
as opposed to sounding like eight separate notes at different pitches if we had the glide turned off. So I have my glide time set to 2.37 seconds, and somewhere around there I think should work. And the idea again is that we'll start with a note, and when the next note hits, it'll just glide or just change constantly to that next note. So it'll just change from a C to a D, and then from a D to an E. And with a long glide time like so, it'll make the whole thing sound like it's just one long note playing back. So let me play it back now. Alright, and I think that sounds pretty good. I'm just going to do a couple more things. I'm going to bump up my glide time a little bit to 2.84 seconds and then I'm going to go into my MIDI editor and the way it sounded when I played it back last time is that the C starts here or the note starts transitioning to a C right here and then I think it hits a C somewhere right around here when I actually want it to hit the C right here right when the drop comes so I'm just going to Highlight these notes, and I'm going to drag them out like so, all right? And then I'm going to drag that one so. So we might have a little bit more of a transition here, but this will actually sound nice because it'll sound like we're kind of just hanging out for a second and then starting our ascension again. Now, there's a couple more things I'd like to do to make this pitch effect a bit more dramatic. We're going to set our filter to low pass, and low pass 12 is fine, and we're going to have a nice gentle resonance uh, or I'd say a medium resonance and we want to have our filter open all right so by clicking this uh, my filter curve will show up in automation I'm just gonna zoom out all right and I'm just gonna make some breakpoints here all right and again the idea is that over the course of this pitch ramp we're also going to open up the filter all right and i'd like it to start off kind of mellow and then towards the end really really open up all right so you can see here that i kind of have something that's a bit more exponential looking than just a straight line and i think i think something like this will sound better and it'll be a bit more dramatic all right so like so and like so and like so. And again, lots of these different controls in the simpler, um, when automated, uh, will sound good in this situation, in a build situation. I think lots of automation here of all different kinds of things is, is a good thing for builds. All right, so let's play it back. I'm going to stop here, but stay tuned for part two of the tutorial, where we'll actually tighten up the build by adding effects like reverb and sidechain compression. Take care.